Okay. Which means that you guys are going to have to feed me everything. All right. The first one we did, the first one of number five, I believe, right? So number five, we did. Okay. Basically, what's the purpose of this question? Find out what guy and father couldn't be. Okay. We're not looking for who it could be. We're looking for who the parent of that offspring could not possibly have been. So it's kind of, it says, I believe, exoneration on the assignment. It so let's go ahead. Uh, we did letter A. Let's go on to letter B. And then I will let you guys discuss C, D, and E. What's that? Okay, A. Well, I'll let you go ahead and get that one once we've done B. Okay, so let's discuss B. Okay, B. Who's the mom? O. O. What's the only way that you can be O? Okay, so recessive, recessive. That's the only way that you can be type O. There's mom right there. It's <coughs> the only way. All right, now what is the child? B. The child is type B. So is, is type B blood, is that a phenotype or a genotype? Is that a geno or pheno? It's phenotype, how do you know that's, well, basically, you know that it's phenotype because is there only one way to get type B? That's one indication. How many ways are there to get type B? There's two. There's, a, there's two ways to be type B. And that's one indication that this is the phenotype. This is the appearance of what we're about to give it as the options of getting this way. Okay, here we go. What's the first way of having type B blood? Toby? Oh, dear. Toby. Okay, you got an A and you got a B. Okay, so here, hold on, what did you say? No, A, B is I meant the father. Okay, the father. Okay, we're talking about the child first. The child first. What are the options to make you type B? Uh, big, B, big B, big B. Okay, big B, big B. And we're going to talk about this today. You should have read about it, but we're going to talk about it a little bit today with multiple alleles, and we've got a couple of different ways to talk about it. Okay, got a B and another B. All right, what's another way to have type B blood? This is the child. We're looking at what they could possibly be. Big B, little I. Big B, little I. Now, I feel like it's necessary, real quick, to remind you, just in case you haven't read this portion, to remind you what this actually means. Now, what this comes down to is what is carried along with your blood cells. What kind of markers? Did we talk about recognition of self? How a cell, if it has certain sugars on its surface, will be recognized as a part of your body? Did we talk about that? Barry, do you remember that? Okay. How, how do you know that it's me walking down the hall? If you see me from the side or from the back or from the front, how do you know that it's me? Being what? Bald head. Being bald, bald head. What else? Your ears. My ears kind of stick out like a monkey. That's not very nice, Billy. I'm being, I'm just You're being honest. I don't appreciate. <laughs> I don't appreciate honesty. Okay, somebody. How do you know that it's me? Besides, okay, bald head. That's usually an indication. Is there a certain manner of in which I usually dress? Yeah, you, I usually wear a polo and khakis of some nature. Okay, so that's another indication. I recognize Billy because his hair is usually a muss. Yep. And that way I can tell that it's you. <laughs> and you, I recognize you because on occasion you're... <laughs> anyway, your hair is a different color. Okay, um, let's go on. <laughs> All right, now blood cells are recognized as belonging to your body or not based on their appearance, based on their appearance. So if I just draw you a generic blood cell, all right, they're usually illustrated like this because a blood cell does not have a nucleus. As the blood cell matured and left the bone marrow, the nucleus was removed. It was deteriorated and broke it down. So basically, whenever we draw a blood cell, it kind of looks like a donut, but that's not actually a hole. It's just like an indentation. So basically, you've got, what would it be? A, a cream-filled Danish, maybe? No. Not, not a donut, but, oh, I'm talking about food in its first hour. All right. Now, how do you know your blood is your blood is based on the markers on the outside? Do you know what type of blood, what, what type of blood you are, Maddie? I'm type AB. You're type AB. That would indicate that on the surface of Madeline's blood cells, she has both the antigen A, which is, which is a protein, a sugar, a fat. It's, it's a marker of some sort or other, recognized by your body as A, and markers for B. I have type O negative. Do you know if you're positive or negative? Positive. You're positive? Okay, what that means is that there's an additional marker on the outside. So you're even more unique or more specialized. In fact, that's kind of ironic that I picked you because you are the most unique. Cool. 
<laughs> okay, you are the only one that cannot give blood to anyone, but can receive blood from everyone. So anybody in this room, if Madeline suddenly collapsed and started bleeding on the floor, any one of us could give her blood because you have, you have the A antigens in your body. If, if somebody who had type A blood came along, could they give you their blood? Yeah. Does that look normal to you? Does your body recognize that? Because you got it. Yes. Well, because that. they have it and you recognize it as part of your own body. That's cool. Yeah. What well, about the antibodies in your blood? For example, if they gave pure blood to Maddie, would she kind of die? If she, if so, okay, gave pure blood? Yeah, like pure blood without the antibodies taken out. Okay, without the antibodies taken out, her, her immune response would attack the antibodies. Oh would attack those. So, so her ultimately, which one's going to last longer, foreign antibodies or her own? She has the ability to make more, so her own are going to win out. What about type B blood? Can somebody give her type B? Can somebody give her blood that's type B? Yep. No. Okay, well here's me. That's me, right there. I am type O. Oh. I have no markers on the outside of my blood cells. In fact, I am, to take it a step further, I am O negative, which means that I not only have a lack of A antigens and a lack of B antigens, but also I have nothing called the RH factor, which is what that positive and negative is. Does everybody know if they're positive or negative? You guys are old enough to give blood, many of you. So you probably know by now. Who, who here knows that they're positive? That means that you have this special marker called the rhesus factor, RH. Guess, who, guess what, it, what kind of organism it was discovered in? A uh, rhesus monkey. That's right. Okay, RH positive means that you have that additional marker on the outside to tell your body, this is my cell. It belongs here. All right. RH negative means that I have no RH factor, which means that I have no marker. And not only am I, and not only am I negative, but I'm also O negative, so I have nothing. Can I give her my blood? Will her body respond badly to my blood? Is there anything to say you don't belong here? No, your, your body only responds to things that are present, not the lack of antigens, the presence of antigens. So her blood cells can be okay with mine in there too. All right, can she give hers to me? She, she's like the polar opposite. You give me her blood and I'm going to go into shock and I'm going to probably reach, run high fevers and probably, depending on how severe my injuries were, die. Okay, so you cannot give your blood to me, but I can give my blood to you. See, that's why I'm a nicer person than you are. <laughs> I'm just like, wake up, Madeline. Okay, yes. Doesn't that mean there's only like, not that many people out there that can actually give blood to you? So. Yeah. There's only one. There's only one blood type that can give their blood to me. I'm O negative, and that is O negative. They're the only ones. So if I'm bleeding in the middle of the street, don't bother. Not, you can't do it. You're not gonna help me. So that's why, that's why there's a big demand for plasma too, is because plasma will increase the blood fluid volume and help you to pump your blood when your blood pressure is dropping due to loss of blood. So that's why plasma is so important. And then they try to keep a stock of O negative because it's the most versatile. Like I get calls on a daily to weekly basis from the blood center. Like, have you given lately? Have you given lately? Have you given lately? Sorry, I need some for myself. I gotta, I gotta have something in there. Okay, are you ready to look at this now? Okay, are we ready to take this idea and move it over to here? I believe so. All right, here we go. All right, this right here, this mother is...